links with traffic. You need links with traffic to get better rankings. That's what we hear. And we also hear that traffic measurement on links is the new standard. Well, in fact, they're not. And I was confused myself when I heard that. And I looked into tools like Ahrefs or SEMrush, Systrix, but also link research tools, just to find out that we're talking about the same thing, mostly. But other people may be confused when they hear links with traffic. So I want to show you how you can, without any tools, find links with traffic and how you can do it in the tools. For the sole purpose to get better links, to avoid getting links on pages that don't rank. So let's get started. I'm looking forward to it. So links with traffic. Let's start to talk about the same thing. It's not Apple and Pierce here in SEO or in technology, but actually I found a lot of confusion when asking for links with traffic. And to give you a little bit more context, here's what I asked. I simply ask people, what does links with traffic mean to you? to SEOs. And Roger Monty, the Monty Buster said that generally it means links from sites that are doing something right. Generally it doesn't hold true in B2B and long tail in niches. So I'm not sure about that second sentence, but he says that links for traffic are links from legit sites. So why is that? Nikki here says that's a link from a site that will bring valuable traffic with it and also placed for offsite value where as a link with traffic would be placed for offset value as well as likelihood that readers of that site would click through to the link on your site. So what Nick is says is it's a link that is on a page that ranks for search results for different keyword phrases being searched and users that come to that page also click on that link. Okay, so that's two things. This person here has no idea what I'm talking about, so maybe digital marketing has not so much to do with SEO. I don't know, maybe the question was wrong. But then says something where he feels it too harsh, but I think he's spot on with what I thought people understand as links with traffic. Getting real re referral traffic. Visitors. Getting people, humans, visiting your site. To do what? To actually convert, to generate a lead, to, to, to buy something on your website. BB nails it and says here, it's links on pages that get traffic or links that bring referral traffic. Now what? Which of those would you pick if you buy links with traffic? If you tell your link building company, I only take links with traffic. And Matt Diggity in a webinar said that links for traffic is the new standard. And I think Ahrefs has been promoting a lot about links for traffic. So while I'm not the pro Ahrefs user, I somehow got the impression that this is something completely new, awesome, which would be referral traffic. So just to, to go back to the basics, when we talk about a link, we talk about a source page linking to a target page, a source page URL, linking to a target page URL. It's never a domain linking to a domain. It's also not a folder linking to a folder. There is a couple interesting metrics that you can derive from that, but they have nothing to do with link building. So for example, a very popular metric being MOS DA, MOS Domain Authority. Another one being Ahrefs Domain Rating, DR. And Google clearly said that they don't have any metrics uh, specific to site authority, website authority. And Ahrefs isn't shy to, to, to confirm that they know that. And the Ahrefs even say DR is not to measure a link. So Ahrefs DR measures referring domains to a domain. So yeah, it's a logarithmic function. And they explain it really well. What that means is DR looks the same for all links. So when you look at the link here, the source page, has some anchor text linking to a target page. What that means is you have a page that you can click on, but it doesn't say anything about how many people see that page, which would be this. Links with traffic from organic rankings. The number of people that see that page in the SERPs as impressions would be one question. After click-throughs, they click through the page, they see that source page, and the content and hopefully they also see your link and measuring organic rankings is as old as organic search is and googling in 1998 you could already do a search and you would get results systrix has been providing ranking data a, a static index of ranking data of serps in 2008 and they also calculated what they call visibility index they normalized the rankings the keywords by their search volume and also the estimated click-through rate. 
case you didn't know, if you rank a number one, you get a lot more clicks from that first page than if you rank a number nine, a lot more. It really depends on the topic, on the keyword and all that, but the ranking position is an indication about how much traffic you get from a search page, from the search impression, to the site. This is where the problems start, because nowadays SERPs are not SERPs. Every country, every visitor, depending on history, sees different SERPs. So you have a difference between the tools anyways. However, SEMrush in 2009, Searchmetrics in 2010, Ahrefs, I'm not sure when they were founded, 2014, 15, 16. I have no idea when they added something like what they call traffic. And LRT and Link Research Tools, my product, that I built because I was not happy with a lot of data that I got, outdated data, is using a metric called KW domain, the number of keywords that a domain ranks for, since 2009 as well. And I'm sure there are plenty of other tools because it's just so obvious. Why is it so obvious? When you do link building, the best link for a keyword, ABC, is the number one ranking page for A, that's it. And so naturally, you need to make sure that you find pages that rank for something, in best case for your keyword or related keywords. Using links from pages that don't rank for anything means using links from penalized websites, from de-indexed websites, from websites that are blocking the bots. Many different reasons why a website doesn't rank at all. For instance, it could all be also be JavaScript and the website being too, too weak to get crawled. Just an idea. However, links with traffic from organic rankings have been the standard since 2003. Since I'm in the SEO industry, link builders were building links that were on pages that ranked in Google because all the other links were pointless and they still are. I would not call this the new standard, which confused me a lot, to be honest. It's not a new standard and it's not a new metric. I also learned, and that was my confusion as well, that what Atrus calls traffic is actually traffic from organic rankings. The visitors to a page and in addition to that, you have to be aware that this is just an approximation. It's a guess. So if we know it ranks for the keyword on position number five, and if we know from clickstream data that has a click-through rate of, let's say, 15%, then we can calculate how many users would actually visit that page. And also, if uh, you have clickstream data, then in theory, you could do a lot more detailed analysis. You would see source page URL to target page URL because this is what I thought we're getting now, finally, as the new standard. Referral traffic. Links with traffic from organic rankings that send people to a target page. So the referral traffic here would be links with traffic sending referral traffic. And I've not seen this in any tool. So 100% of the visitors come to a page and only 20% click through. That's a very different number. And a couple different search patents come into play here. One being about the random surfer. Google had a patent for many years that just talks about the probability of someone clicking a link. So when five people visit this page and they see this link here that I called anchor text, how high is the probability of someone clicking on that link and actually ending up at the target page? And this is what Google uses for a link evaluation. So when you hear a recommendation, don't put links in a banner, don't put links in a footer, don't put links in the, in the sidebar, that's really just the simplification of this concept. i give you another example. If you have a page that is very long and you have a link on the top and a link in the middle, I guess a lot of people would say, oh, it's very likely that they would click on the first link. But the truth is, it's not likely at all. It depends on the size of that link. If there is some box like here around it, it might be a call out with a big fat green button. Then the likeliness of that link being clicked is a lot higher. And a lot of people understand that the visual presentation of the link is important. It would be bad if all your built links would suddenly stick out like red flags, you know, on big fat green buttons, of course. However, Keep in mind that the context of the link, the story of the link is also important. So I'm sure you can imagine that the probability of someone clicking on a link that has a better promise in the anchor text is also higher. So think about this. You have an article about woodworking and it has two or three links in there. And one of the links has an actual promise. A simple promise would be learn more here or get additional data or get a discount 
order now at a discount. Those are the links that are actually a higher probability from those people that you want on your target page. And now suddenly we're talking about UX and conversion optimization and real people referral traffic. The goal would be to know how many people visit my website via that link. And you get this information in your referrals anyways. Link Research Tools has been collecting that data via link alerts from referral data for many years. And I think other tools are doing that too. But it's too sparse. So you cannot provide a public index of which page visits which page. I'm not aware of a tool that does that. And I thought generally that Ahrefs did provide that. Yeah, I was wrong. And we're all talking about the same thing. Links for traffic from organic rankings. And yeah, in the next part, I'm going to show you how you can find links with traffic from organic rankings for free without any tool. Because if you hear something like you need Ahrefs for that, that's wrong. If you hear something like you need link research tools for that, no, you don't. And in fact, there's a couple different free methods that I'm going to talk about next. Okay, so let's say my niche is woodworking. The best link for a keyword is the number one ranking result for that keyword. I googled that here and what do you see here? A map, a lot of companies here, e shopping results, knowledge graph, videos. And you scroll down and you realize, okay, finally the first organic result would be Wikipedia about woodworking. Do you think it's uh, realistic that you get a link on Wikipedia for woodworking? I don't know, you probably need to do something really good. Now, here we got Woodcraft, popular woodworking magazine. And here's where I want to stop, because the question is, do you want a number one ranking for woodworking and compete with Wikipedia? The answer is most probably no. What you really want to do is probably selling woodworking tools. So let's Google that. So you Google woodworking tools and guess what? You get all the shopping results again. You get some answers here, but you have websites that are selling tools just like you. Are you Rockler? Are you Woodcraft? I don't know. But here's a blog, Beginner's Guide to Must-Have Basic Tools for Woodworking. And here's 20 woodworking hand tools list for beginners. 11 are so basic woodworking tools. So we start to think about the audience, not just your product, but who's actually going to buy your stuff. And this is the beginning of a big, great and endless journey in keyword research. Because what you really want to have is people searching for your products or searching for something to find your products. And they call this the top of the funnel. Buying hand tools for woodworking. Okay, if you are ready to buy, you probably go to Amazon anyways or eBay or I don't know, some big shopping site. Maybe you also go to Google. So what you want to do is you need to capture traffic a lot earlier. Your website should be number one for woodworking. It should be number one for woodworking tools. We've seen that. It's even a suggestion. Attention, you don't need expensive keyword research tools. One keyword research tool is here in your head. The second one is here in the browser dropdown of Google, the suggested searches. Why does Google suggest woodworking tools for beginners? Because a lot of people search it. And there are tools where you can see traffic numbers, how many people search it, in which country, at which time, during the day, in the night, on the weekends, endless possibilities. But we have to start with a concept that you need to rank for something that will bring you people. Woodworking Tools for Beginners is a query that has the intent of someone looking for information. What tools are good for beginners? What do I need to be careful about? Now, when we search about this long tail phrase, it actually brings back a lot better result. A lot of existing pages here are talking about woodworking tools for beginners because you're not the only one who knows that a lot of people search that. So other people write content about that as well. And you can tell that there are maybe even some SEOs in the game when you find almost identical titles, essential woodworking tools for beginners. Yeah, we see some links in here, all biscuits and gravy. And I'm guessing these links are go to Amazon. So the thickness planner here is an Amazon link. Okay, great. So that's an affiliate for sure. And here's a little hack. If you highlight your project domains being amazon.com, then you would get these project links highlighted. Amazon.com.com. Oh, 
look at that. That's a lot of links on this page. Guess it again. Idea would be that all the affiliate links show up in a different color. If I could get a link there, I would take it. That's for sure. And the good news is, this is an affiliate. We saw that there are Amazon links in there. Oh, Avon is another affiliate network. And they are not even cloaked. Some people you know, want to hide the fact that they are affiliate links from very simple checks by redirects. And what we know, because this is a affiliate that has a lot of ads on here as well, is in it for the money. He even says so. I may receive a commission. So he's probably open to some kind of partnership. You may even ask him if you can buy a link there. But I would be careful about that because link buying is against the Google guidelines. So you better not end up on a website that has sold hundreds of links. And unfortunately, there's not a quick way to check this out for free. There are other tools in Link Research Tools where you can get a more better estimation of that, but that's not uh, what we're talking about now. A second result would be woodworking tools for beginners. Let's check it out. Oh, Mr. Crafted Workshop. Yeah, lots of videos, nice links. Let's start the link checker here. Oh, look at that. Amazon, Amazon. Okay, he has shortened to Amazon, A-M-C-N-T-O, which, yeah, is what I see here. So, we just found links that have traffic from organic rankings. That's how easy it is for free. So, woodworking tools for beginners. All of these results receive visitors. All of these pages here are being clicked on. The one here down below, a little bit less. But you can tell that because we took a long tail phrase, we reach pages that look commercial as well because woodworking tools are commercial topic. People that write about woodworking tools want to usually sell woodworking tools. So it's highly commercial. And there are some guidelines here where you can learn, someone writing about his experiences, uh, but mostly I see ads, lots of ads. And uh, so that's what we have here. However, all of these pages are ranking in Google. So they are good to get a link from. And with more advanced link prospecting tools, like the SERP tool that we built in 2008 for ourselves when we were still offering link building services, they do query the SERPs like that and come back with a filter. So when you run a campaign in Pitchbox, for example, they do just the same. They just query Google, for example, and then you have different parameters where you can filter to have the good ones stay there. However, you can do all of that by hand. Uh, some people hire a VA to do something by hand. That's all legit to do. However, I can tell you, if it looks like a lot of work, it is, and it has been optimized and automated for over a decade yeah but links for traffic are pages like this all right so here's the second free trick or it's not a trick really you saw this page here and I enabled that it would highlight not only the follow links but the project links my project here is amazon so everything that is green and uh blue is amazon now when you look at that you may think wow that's a lot of amazon links which of those links would get clicked first? I would be very curious to learn about that. And my original understanding of links with traffic would be those links from the page that were sending traffic to Amazon. Not all of them can click at the same time. However, what I learned is the industry and most experts seem to understand that links with traffic are actually just links on a page like this. So you get to review this page. What do you do next? Here's a free trick how you can verify if a page ranks in Google. And actually two. So number one, you take that title. If you search for the title and it comes back, it ranks in Google. This is what we call title rank. If you do this on scale and the result ranks a number one, you have a good page, popularwoodworking.com. But we also see that there is a ton of other pages that seem to have a similar content. So for instance, here, Hatch Furniture, What's that? It looks similar, but without the affiliate links. Okay, same title. Now we could compare the two, but if you would see this page here and Google the title and get the other page back, then you would know that this page here is not as powerful. It is ranking for the title. So the next challenge would be to have the title in quotes, and then the results may be a little bit different. But you see, there's a lot of pages. I clicked on see more. I oh, know more woodworking power tools here. Yeah. And with title, 
being listed on so many pages, you also find them in the body counted. Now there are some people who say, oh, we need to use Intitle or another crazy search operator. Don't do that. Because number one, there are SEO tools, so only used by SEOs. Number two, Google crippled all these parameter tools uh, like site, in URL, in title, many years ago. Why? Because they want to make it harder for us, for SEOs. But that's nothing fancy so far because title rank has been around since 2011 and link research tools and we use that for instance to identify pages that don't rank where you have links to understand that these links might have a penalty. But there is something even better that you can do by hand. You pick a random sentence, like really random, yet sold on buying a biscuit. You start in the middle and then you continue across the sentence, the dot, you need to have punctuation characters in there. And then you search that thing in quotes. Why is it so important to, to cross sentences? Because number one, you search for an exact phrase of that page and the next sentence connected to it. So there's a lot of concepts in text analysis, but essentially they try, search engines try to rip the, the text apart into sentences, into paragraphs, into... Um, now they're talking about, uh, not about shingles, but about uh, passages. They do their thing, the search engine magic, to understand what's on the page. If you are searching for something that has two sentences connected, you actually have a very precise query for an article. And what we get back is not so great. We actually see that the same article or the same two sentences appear on Facebook, on Quizlet, list of woodworking tools here, more woodworking sites. So suddenly we see that this content appears on so many other places and yet this page is ranking. How is that possible? In theory, this was taken from one of these other places. And as we can see here, there's results filtered. Google filtered the results for us. So we don't get too many same results. This was filtered. The result that we're looking at here from November 2018 was filtered. It was filtered for duplicate content. And when Google says there's no duplicate content penalty, they are right. Because this website isn't penalized. We saw it came back for a phrase, beginners, woodworking tools for beginners. But it is not as powerful as you may think because it has duplicate content on it. So for that query, it was filtered. And people often confuse Google penalties with Google filters. This is the most basic example I can give you for a Google filter. Google decides to show a set of results, in this case a seven, and they filtered away a lot more. We got 84 results. So what's that? 84 minus seven is 77. Got it? 77 results were not shown, they were filtered. So that page here, at least for parts of the content, is not the best page for every query, but it is a great page for the beginner's guide, uh, for the woodworking tools for beginners. Let me repeat that. Again, we'll see how it goes, a good size supply of clamps. Yes, based on our experience, we built a, a tool, a, a metric, we've crawled trillions of, of such queries many times. The length of the phrase is also important. If you want to find out if a website ranks for a lot of stuff, then pick a page and then pick phrases. And it's very easy for a website to rank for, let's say, 19 words or 17 words or 11 words. But if you get to, to 32 words, that is really crazy. And the length of the uh, sentence that you pick depends on the content, of course. But what this means in the search engine is that for each of these variations, they have different um, search indexes, if you want. The reverse index is what they call it. And that means the more important, and the more powerful, the more link juice, link power a website has, the longer the phrases can be. And uh, we even had a tool to measure that on a page-by-page -page basis for domains. It's a very expensive measure, as you can imagine. But what we just saw is that we found a page that ranks for one query and is filtered for the other query. Because filtering happens on a query basis, a keyword base. Which again confirms that you do have different rules for different keyword phrases, different topics, different search intent, different country, different language. Anyways, this is not the, the most terrible website but I think it's quite spammy. You see all these ads here for the blue pill and lots more ads and ads here and ads there. I would say this guy is in it for the money. Maybe that's the reason that they don't rank for everything because Google may be caught on to them. 
we don't know here. Just be careful if it looks too commercial and you find too many commercial links in there, there's a chance that it might not be ranking forever. I might get a penalty itself. So the web changes. If something is okay in terms of risk to get a link from, it might not be okay next month when 20 links were sold, for example. All right, so these uh, were the three methods that I wanted to explain how to find links with traffic. We talked about what keywords you want to search for anyways and optimize for and SEO for, how you could find good ranking pages that would get you links with traffic, links on pages that have organic traffic. And I also showed you with a query how you can make sure that a website ranks for something, which means has traffic. The exact numbers, how much traffic it has, is a great question that you can only answer if you have log file analysis. Not even analytics helps. Because if you have a website in Europe, for example, a lot of people don't enable the cookies or don't confirm the GDPR cookie allowance. And that means they are not tracked by Google Analytics. When you look at the actual log files, you would see how many people visit that page. Then you need to filter the bots, duplicates, etc., etc. But there are some good solutions out there to measure that. What do you see in traffic metrics from Ahrefs is something different. Keywords that a page ranks for. And you also see how they estimate how many people would go to that page for all the keywords that it ranks for. Yeah, that's what we look into next. Okay, so next we're going to check out if the links that we have here on the page are links for traffic by definition of organic traffic to this page. And we're going to look at that in different tools. The first one of them being Ahrefs. And what I did is I just pasted the URL in here and I immediately got back organic keywords, organic traffic, and they even say that the target website subsection or URLs estimated monthly organic traffic from search. And while this is very correct here now, I wonder how I was confused that this could be referral traffic. When you look into some backlinks, you see a very shortened, oh wait, where is that? A very shortened way of how metrics are presented. And here it's called traffic only. And uh, there's a lot of these links having zero traffic. But even when you read this here, the referring pages estimated monthly organic traffic from search. So again, I'm sorry, I have no idea how I came up with the idea that this could be referral traffic, which would be so amazing to have, by the way. But we got the number of keywords that it ranks for, and we got the number of estimated visitors to that page based on these keywords. So you will nowhere probably see something that has visitors from organic, but no organic keywords. It's more the opposite. 12 keywords to this page here with 0.01 visitor is not I'm not sure what that should mean even. Okay, I got a cheap version here. I don't see the uh, bad rankings. Oh, okay, and that's why. Because, you know, the best body, uh, the best place to hide a dead body is the second page of Google. Actually, none of these will get a lot of links, uh, a lot of uh, click-throughs, a lot of traffic from the SERP. And uh, yeah, maybe this is expressed here by the division by 100 or, or so. I would say a visitor is a visitor. You cannot have a 0 0.01 visitor. So maybe that's something that I would add. If the team of Ahrefs sees this, Tim, I'm not sure what the decimals here, how they make sense. I don't think they make sense at all. So I would maybe learn more. Maybe I just need to read the freaking manual more. Learn more. Yes. Ahrefs does a fantastic job of describing how they do everything, how they calculate everything uh, next to none. The best example of how it should be. Oh, sorry, I totally clicked over that and uh, we're not going to read that together now. Just saying, uh, read that freaking manual. And uh, yeah, in this case, we saw that when we go back, that the organic traffic is estimated at 3,700 visitors to that page. And just to make a plausible check, overall that domain should get 145,000 visitors. Okay, so this is the estimation for the URL. Great. Great rankings. And as you saw, uh, part of that page was listed in the duplicate content, uh, was filtered by duplicate content filters, and it's still 
brings in a lot of traffic. So the next tool that I have here is SEMrush. And you can do the same thing. You give them the exact URL and then they see the keywords ranking. And they show 635 keywords. Now, does that mean the data is wrong? I don't think so. Because what we see here is probably global organic traffic. So for all countries together, I think I saw that somewhere in a breakdown that the traffic is broken down by, yeah, here we go, by country. Well, here you don't have the the sum of all. So when I switch to UK, you do have 126 keywords. And uh, is there even a filter here to show them all combined? No. Maybe that's because usually there are different databases for every country and you don't spit them all into one. And Ahrefs probably just aggregates them here as all together, which is also interesting because when I look at this breakdown, which I find a, a great breakdown, that the majority of the traffic from organic search is coming from the United States. Or in other words, it uses content that is written by and for US people. It talks about topics relevant to US people and probably has links from the US. So that's all good. And it would be very surprising if it would rank in Austria and Germany for substantial traffic. I just visited it, but you don't see that so quick here. Okay, so the same data we could probably get with maybe it, here's the overview. No, this is still by database, not aggregated. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a pro user of Ace. I'm not a pro user of SEMrush. I have accounts with them for many years. The same is true for Systrix, where I entered the URL and I get back a lot of keywords here. And you can tell that this has less keywords here for the US, actually a lot less. Oh wait, don't hack the URLs of other tools if you don't understand how they work. Yeah, it looks like they only have 29 English language keyword phrases in here. The difference between the tools is in general for this kind of check, the corpus of the keywords. How many different keywords do they have? How are these keywords categorized and grouped together? So when being searched for, will the page come back or not? If you don't search for the keyword phrases, then you won't find that website in there. So it looks like for this topic in this country, Systrix has fewer keywords than SEMrush and Ahrefs, which is also not surprising. What we know is, however, that the page is ranking for stuff, which is a great information. And the most important information that you need in link building is actually how, for how many keywords does the domain rank for, right? You don't know where that link will be, but it will be somewhere on the website. So a general yes or no, does the website have rankings, any rankings or not, is usually sufficient. Now, I'm suddenly talking about a domain-based metric, you say, and that's right, because the domain is the aggregation of all the pages. And if even one page ranks for one keyword, it means it's not penalized. So. We can then discuss if it's, of course, more important to have a very high visibility index, as Systrix says, or not. In my opinion, it does not matter. So you see, SEMrush has a different keyword database, Ahrefs and Systrix. What matters is, can a page on that domain rank at all? In link research tools, we had that this is LRT Classic from 2009. We have a keyword, keyword domain metric. We see 1,227 keywords that the domain ranks for. And this is what we use. In this case, it's a very simple example. You could add thousands of thousands of URLs. I just added this one here. And when I rerun here, of course, I could also, I oh, know, actually I added link velocity trends theme. The Alexa rank is not very relevant, but the deep link ratio, or maybe some traffic metrics would be still interesting. I, I told you that traffic metrics have been around for a while. So I yeah, asked SEMrush, we would need to enable, they have a SEMrush traffic, SEMrush price. We don't have the Ahrefs metrics in here yet, but that would be worth looking into. And what we see here is really more important. The website ranks, it ranks for a lot of keywords, Systrix visibility index, here SEMrush and here Ahrefs. So what you really need to know is there a set of keywords that the website ranks and then of 
course, for which keywords. If you would see in here, for instance, that this is not woodworking and lumber and all these other keywords related to woodworking, then you would be in trouble. Okay, so that's how easy it is to look up the links having traffic or not. If we're talking about organic rankings, I've not found any tool yet that can show me the downstream traffic, the referral traffic that a link brings, except connecting Google Analytics and collecting that data. Yeah, with that, I hope this was useful. Like I said, the confusion was mine. And I saw also, I know more about Ahrefs now, which I find great. I also understand that people talk about one thing but really mean two different things. And I hope this video could clarify that confusion a little bit. And with that, I say goodbye. Oh, I forgot to show you this. In link research tools, of course, you see the ranking keywords for every for every link or for every page. In this case, links are on pages, so you maybe want to see the page or the link. Yeah, so you have the numbers here as well, just like the referring domains and the outgoing domains, all these other 150 metrics that we have. Yeah, that's that. And thank you very much for watching and I look forward to your feedback. What do you think about uh, you know, this confusion and if you're going after links with traffic and what you think I may be missing or got wrong again, God forbid, but please, if you find some mistake, if I did something wrong here, tell me, I'm all, of, all for it. This is why I'm doing the video, all right? So thank you very much. Bye-bye, have a great day.